What is going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all doing well and having a really great day. Today is the day we're going to disconnect the solar stuff. And I had high hopes to reach that. <laughs> Damn it. Let me get a ladder. Back with a stool. All right. So like I was trying to say, we need to shut all this down. This is going to be the end of the solar stuff in the trailer. So power going out from the panels needed to be uh, killed. Obviously, you guys know this solar pergola is the only thing I actually currently have hooked up. The solar shed right here is actually not hooked up yet. I still have to run the wires. I did get the roof boots though and uh, the side boots there so I can actually run the solar stuff down the side and get it in the ground over to the house once we get everything relocated. But I think I'm gonna focus on the relocation first versus uh, doing anything else. So as you can see, I got all the batteries here. I actually have everything shut off except for these AL zeros. Now these things are just pulling like 200 watts or so, 250 watts, roughly, as you can see. And they're just uh, keeping the place warm, 56 degrees in here. But again, fighting this stuff in the winter time is totally not worth the aggravation. So we are going to be killing all of this right now. There goes the power out and that's it. That one's already off. It's not even actually hooked up. These are 6,000 XP's from Signature Solar, by the way. Shout out to them. These machines work awesome. So what I need to do here is basically kill everything, right? Power coming into this unit, the power on the side. I need to shut that off. Then we got all these batteries I need to kill. Power them all off because again, they're all getting disconnected and brought into the house. So now that those are off. Oh yeah, I got a power button. Totally forgot. Gotta kill all these. Now, once I remove all these batteries from this uh, setup here, right, I need to make sure I put them back in the same order. So I'm going to label these the Sharpie. I'm gonna put one through six on the little uh, serial tags here. I'm just gonna write on it. I think that's probably the best way to do it. So I don't have to uh, pay attention to the switches here. I'd rather just go off of that. And then, um, yeah, we gotta get all this pulled into the basement. So this over here, is where we're going to be bringing everything. If you guys saw my last couple videos talking about this and uh, actually building this wall down here, you guys could see we are prepped for the two inverters to go right here on the wall. We're going to have a the batteries basically right back here, and we're going to have everything come behind the wall, or through the wall rather, in this little dead space, and connect to the batteries. So that is uh, the plan here. I actually still do have to paint this wall. I'm going to paint it gray. You guys agreed that this uh, really dark gray, blackish color would really close this in, even though I did just add this light here. So we had a bunch more light in here. That wall being a little bit brighter and actually matching the color of the inverters, I think will look really good. And it also will match the uh, color of the electrical panel. So that'd be pretty cool too. So needless to say, I have a bunch of work ahead of me. I gotta get this wall completely painted. I gotta get all that solar stuff disconnected and down here ready to go. And that is gonna take up the rest of my night. So while I finish doing all this and getting ready for the install, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor. Crypto Miner Bros is the ultimate destination for all of your crypto mining needs. Founded in 2018, this company specializes in top quality ASIC miners from brands like Bitmain, Goldshell, and many others. Whether you're a newbie or a pro, they offer competitive prices, fast shipping, and easy payment options worldwide. Pay with bank transfer, Bitcoin, or even other cryptocurrencies, no cash needed. The prices you see on their website include taxes, shipping, and DDP to your door, so there are no surprises at checkout. Join tens of thousands of satisfied customers who trust Crypto Miner Bros for their hardware fulfillment, transparent prices, and world-class service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com, link down below. Okay, so as you can see, I took down all the solar stuff. I got the batteries in here, got the electrical panel in here, and we got the cabinet. Now you guys are going to see this wall before, and this is after. This is the next day. As you can see, the color is pretty much the same color as the top of the inverter. I figured it would look nice, the little gray wall. Um, the lighting, I still need to figure out because the shadow is driving me nuts. But anyways, this is going to work great. So let's get that one right there like so and this guy right there and that looks fantastic check it out both inverters right there nice and even along the wall i got the eg4 battery cabinet right here i'm thinking i'm debating if i want to set this back a little bit but i kind of like how it's like flush mounted and then i got to put all the batteries in here as you can see i labeled them all one through six on these tags here so this is the bottom that's the top and i actually just had to pop out the uh, 
spots here to run these wires through so I'm going to be connecting obviously everything on this first side here so I might have to set the cabinet back a little bit to allow this grommet to be just past this uh, piece of 2x4 here I think that's probably the best way to do it I don't know either way let's uh, I guess let's get these in here and see if I can hopefully move this 700 pound freaking cabinet around when it's full so that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. These are all installed now. I rewired everything. It's about an hour and a half later or so. I actually had to run and drop my kid off at school, but I got them all wired up just before. And I can still move this uh, cabinet. It's a little bit heavy, but it's able to be moved. The wheels are uh, actually work pretty good. These casters, by the way, on this freaking cabinet are so heavy duty. It's just, it's insane. But um, yeah, I'm totally pumped that this is all in here now. I still have to wire it, obviously. I just got the wires kind of dangling back there for the time being. I got the communication wire. I got all the batteries communicating together still. Um, everything is still obviously off in here. I don't want to liven anything up and just have it hanging there. I do need to drill some holes here for the inverter, obviously. Battery lines are going to go in this one. And they're going to go straight out the back. Same thing with the bottom out the back. And then the uh, panel wires are actually going to come in the back side as well. So I'm going to probably drill like three holes here actually because I need... So the, the feed that I'm going to pull from this one I was going to kind of run it along the ground there over and up to the panel, but I think what I'm going to do is go through the back, come up and have the feed coming out of this one and a feed coming through a hole right here, running over to the panel where I actually just mounted it right here. How does that look? What do you guys think about that actually? So I left a space like this for one, this was the shortest 10 three wire I had. So I need to get that into the panel, right? That was one thing. And then two, the, uh, I wanted to have room in case I ever added another inverter there and there. So I have room for four, but I think we're going to stick with two and then whatever. I mean, I might put something here at some point, but I think that's good. I like having the space because actually heat comes off of this thing. Let's get some fans here to keep this thing cool while it's generating power. So it's kind of nice to have a bit more of a gap. I used to have them like slam next to each other and it always made me nervous for whatever reason, even though this thing would be totally fine with the, the wind blowing on it. It's not a big deal. Um, and then I actually ended up hanging this Nerd Gears PDU, which is also surge protected, by the way. I didn't mention that in the video the other day, but this thing is freaking sweet. So I ended up plugging in the cable here. The only issue I have is the wire is like ridiculously long. So I'm probably just going to clip it like this right I didn't want to cross the screen by running it up and over so I'm gonna clip it like that probably and just have it go straight across along the top and then just a nice loop into the PDU itself I was debating whether to raise that up higher or not but I figured it's kind of camera height so that's probably gonna be easier to work with and I just kind of threw this table here so you guys could kind of see what we got going on here it actually looks fantastic I'm super pumped about this everything is in the mechanical room now and once this is operational, it's going to be amazing. I'll be able to do all my testing in here. I'll be able to get literally just all the heat from the winter in here. I'm so excited. I don't have to deal with the trailer anymore, trying to keep this thing warm and not having a stupid cold basement running things on grid like this guy over here. This freaking little, little, a, uh, what is it, AE Pro? AE Box Pro, shout out to Gold Shell. But um, that thing's been running on grid, and it sucks to have to run things on grid when I have all of this solar that I could be using, you know what I mean? So it would just be nice to be able to heat the house. And then I could eventually open up one of these where I had the grow tent pumping heat into the rest of my house prior. I could always open those up again and set up like a mini grow tent right here and a couple machines going into it or into that one, whatever. I was actually going to close those up and move it over, but I don't know. That's at a later date. I'm not really uh, too concerned with that. My main concern here is trying to figure out what I need to do for wiring now. So I need to go get some... Uh, six, three, I'm going to get some six gauge wire to come from here to there. And then same thing, six gauge wire from here to there. The lines I had previously are just too short. These guys right here. And this one was actually a bit under gauged. I don't think, uh, I think this is eight gauge. I don't think this is even six. And I had this hooked up to my, uh, the other inverter, but I stole it from like a dryer plug or something. I can't remember, but Actually, no, sorry, the bigger one was the dryer plug. This is two six legs, six gauge legs with two eight gauge legs. Yeah, so these ones are definitely eight, but I don't remember where I got this from. Oh, you know what? This was for a uh, removable uh, meter box. I actually had this wired up to a 
a male end to go into one of my meter boxes previously. So that's what that was for. But anyways, I'm getting rid of that. That's all like soft wire. I kind of want the uh, hard wire that's not like this shit. I don't know what you even call this, just like frayed wire. I'd like to get like solid if they have it. If not, then whatever, six gauge frayed is fine. It works great. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that's what I got to do. Next video, I'm going to be drilling these holes. I'm going to be getting this thing all wired up, landing these wires into here. And then I need your guys' thoughts on something. Actually, somebody commented on one of my videos and mentioned Duroc. Now, if you guys don't know what Duroc is, it's cement board. Basically, you use it behind tiles in your shower, okay? It basically dries out water, right? Moisture and stuff. That's kind of why I use it for showers, but it's also cement, right? So it's fireproof. Should I line this little cubby here with Duroc or cement board, whatever you guys want to call it? Somebody mentioned I should do it here, but this isn't such a concern because these inverters really don't get crazy hot and they're actually designed with a gap. So I can put my finger back here. They're off the wall. So they're not like gonna transmit heat to this, uh, you know, plywood. So I'm not really concerned with that. They're actually designed to have that gap from that bracket there. So they can uh, cool perfectly fine. So yeah, I'm not really concerned with this wall, but just to be safe, do you guys think I should do it in there? Let me know down in the comments below, but I am freaking pumped. I cannot wait to get this thing all wired up, so I'll do a step-by-step -step wiring this thing, and uh, we'll go from there. You guys have a great, happy, and safe rest of your day, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.